Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Continuing our previous lecture on flash concrete, now we will study about the available methods to test the workability of flash concrete. Basically, there are four methods to test this flash concrete. The first one is slum test. Slum test is the most common and the most famous method to test the workability of fresh concrete. The next one is VB test and followed with the compacting factor test. And the last but not least is flow table test. Even though all these tests are measuring the workability of fresh concrete, but they are using different reference for their outcome. For example, in slum test, it uses the difference of height. And in VB, it uses time. Compacting vector uses the difference of weight. And flow table, it measures the diameter. Now, I will explain the main feature from each of these tests. And I will only highlight on the main and the most important feature. While for the detailed explanation, you can refer to the slide. We start with slum test. Slum test is quite a famous method for testing the fresh concrete because it's very convenient to do and not a complicated method. You need like three basic equipment in a slum test. The first one, you need a cone and then you need a steel rod and a flat and strong base. The other equipments like steel brush, steel rebar or scoop to take the concrete can be replaced with other equipments that share the same functionality. But this tree is the most essential equipment for slum test. So the procedure in doing the slum test can be simplified into six main process. The first one, after you place the slum cone on the steel plate or steel base, you pour in the first layer of the concrete. After you fill with the first layer, you compact the fresh concrete using the steel rod for 25 times. After 25 times, you pour in again the second layer of the fresh concrete. And again, you compact by using the steel rod 25 times. After you complete with the second step, then you pour the last layer, the third one, and you compact the fresh concrete for another 25 times compaction. One thing you must keep in mind when you are compacting the fresh concrete with steel rod, Make sure for the first layer, you compact until the bottom, while for the second layer and the third layer, the compaction need to be done only up to the previous layer. Because if you compact until the bottom, the bottom part will be overly compacted. After you complete the third procedure, then you're going to have some excess on the top of the cone. After you have a flat surface on the top of the cone, slowly lift the cone without vibrating the concrete. And the last part, you invert the cone next to the slum concrete and you measure the difference between the top of the cone and the top of the concrete. That will be your slum value. There are three types of slum that are commonly found in this test. The first type is true slum. This is the slum that we want because it indicates the good cohesion between concrete particles. The next one is shear slum. As it names, the shear slum indicates a lacking of shear resistance of the concrete particles. It may indicate the amount of moisture in the concrete can be quite excessive. If you get the shear slum in your first try, Try to repeat again until you get the true slum, and if you still fail to get the true slum, then you may reject the concrete. And the last one is collapse slum. This type of slum indicates too much amount of moisture that makes the concrete has very small amount of frictions. Sometimes, you may want to get this type of slum because you need a very high workability concrete like a self-compacting concrete where the concrete doesn't require any compactions, when you pour in the concrete, it will consolidate by its own. So it means your concrete must be highly workable. 
or maybe you purposely want the concrete to be workable so you can pump the concrete to the higher floor. Generally, this collapse slump can be obtained by putting a lot of water or by using a super pesticizer. Now moving to the next test. The next test is VB. Now even though people know that VB is available for testing the fresh concrete, but its usage is not as famous as a slump test because it's quite tricky to do and it needs the power of electric to operate the equipment. I can say the equipment is a bit the extension of slump test where you still use the slump cone and the steel rod but equipped with a cylindrical container and a glass plate. So as you can see in this picture, the test still required the use of slump cone and its steel rod but now you have the cylindrical container, transparent plate, a vibration machine, and the electric socket. Because of the limitation on the electrical consumptions, this test is normally done only for the lab scale. So what you need to do for this test, same like in slump test, you need to put the concrete into three layers and for each layer, you have to compact using the steel rod for 25 times. Then you leave the slum cone and you may get the slum concrete. So let me draw the slum concrete over here. Let's say this one is a slum concrete after the slum cone has been lifted up. Now what is the next thing to do? You need to put this transparent plate on the top of slum concrete. So you put it on the top like this. Right, hopefully you can imagine that. After everything is ready, you turn on the machine and the machine will start to vibrate. At this moment, you start to count the time. So the VB time is the time taken to compact the slum concrete with the shape of cone into a fully compacted concrete with a cylindrical shape. The time taken to do this process is VB time. If your concrete is highly workable, the time taken to compact the concrete can be from 0 to 3 seconds. If your concrete is moderately workable, the time taken can be in the range of 3 to 6 seconds. But if your concrete is too dry, the time taken can be longer than 6 seconds. Moving to the next test is compacting vector test. As you can see from this image, the test may not be convenient for the use in the construction site because the equipment is quite bulky and quite heavy as well. In this equipment, you have like three arrangements of concrete container. So the first one is first hopper and the second hopper and at the bottom, it's a cylindrical container. So how to do the test? First you put the concrete on the first hopper without any compactions, just put until it's a bit full. After that, you open the cover of the hopper at the bottom, this one, and the concrete will fall down into the second hopper. The concrete must fall down without any external force applied to them. So the concrete must fall by its own weight. If possible, try to avoid any excessive force to push down the concrete. Sometimes you may get a dry concrete and it fails to flow down. In that case, you may want to give like a very minimum force applied into the concrete, but not that much. After the entire concrete has fallen into the second hopper, release the cover of second hopper and let the concrete fall down into the cylindrical container. After you get the concrete in cylindrical container, you measure the weight. This weight is called as weight of partially compacted concrete, or I will call as a WP. Now, to get the compacting vector value, you need to obtain the ratio of weight of partially compacted concrete and the weight of fully compacted concrete. How to get the weight of fully compacted concrete? You take the cylindrical container, you fill it with the fresh concrete in layers, the height of layer approximately about 5 cm, and you compact the fresh concrete until it reaches the fully compacted conditions. The number of layer given over here is only the approximate number. After you get this container filled with the fully compacted concrete, then you measure the weight. We call this one as a weight of fully compacted concrete or WF. 
Now, compacting vector value is the ratio between weight of partially compacted concrete and weight of fully compacted concrete. If your concrete is highly workable, normally you will get a compacting factor ratio larger than 0.95. For a moderate workability, the range can be between 0.89 up to 0.95. But for compacting vector ratio less than 0.89, the workability can be quite low. Alright, in the next test is flow table test. As you can see from the pictures, we have two types of flow table tests. The first one is for concrete, while the next one is for mortar. The procedure is quite similar for both concrete and mortar. But for mortar, you have like this handle that can be rotated to lift the platform upward and go back down. The same procedure is applied onto the concrete. The first one, you pour the concrete into two layers. In the first layer, you compact about 25 times and put another layer. You compact it again for 25 times. After that, you slowly lift up the stone and let the concrete stand up by its own. Okay? And after that, you grab the handle over here and lift the platform for about 12.5 mm. And then you drop again the platform. Repeat for about 15 times. The concrete will start to spread out every time you drop the platform. After 15 times, then you measure the diameter. The similar concept applies to the mortar specimen. After you put the mortar into this cone, you lift the cone and rotate the wheel over here to let the platform going upward and drop. After you repeat the sequence for like 25 times, the mortar will be spreading out on the platform. Then you measure the diameter. After you get the average of 4 diameters, then you calculate the flow of the concrete using the formula of the average diameter subtracted with the original diameter the original diameter is the diameter of the cone divided with the original diameter times 100%. So the equation is showing how much is the flow or the spread of the concrete from the original state. It is important to measure the workability of fresh concrete because it will indicate the condition of the concrete that you will get once it has hardened. Highly workable concrete is normally indicated with bleeding. Bleeding is the issue where the water from the concrete is rising up to the surface and may affect the overall condition of the concrete. So you can see the appearance of water over here. In the extreme cases, bleeding may lead to the segregations. As I've explained before, if bleeding happens in extreme conditions, among the four materials of concrete, water is the material with the lowest specific gravity. So when your concrete is highly workable, the heaviest material will go down first, which is coarse aggregate. And then because of the smaller size, fine aggregate will be pushed up, while the water will be rising to the surface. And in the middle of the process, the water will bring the finer cement particles and leave so many voids at the bottom of the concrete because there is insufficient amount of cement paste to coat the coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. Now as you can see, on the surface of the concrete, it has a lot of water. So it means the water cement ratio suddenly becomes very high. The problem happens when the concrete has hardened later on. Because of the extremely high water cement ratio on the surface, the strength will be very low on the surface and it creates a latence. What is latence? Latence is a very weak surface of concrete due to this high water cement ratio as shown in this picture. Okay, this is latence. Now because of this issue as well, normally for a structure that needs a very strong surface, it's not recommended to use a very high slum concrete. For example, the concrete for highway. Concrete for highway normally uses a low workable concrete because of this latent issue. If let's say you have a highway over here with so many vehicles on the surface, we don't want the concrete with a very weak surface because it will be inconvenient for the vehicles to pass through it. 
Okay everyone, I hope you can get some knowledge from this video. If you have any questions, just reply to my post at authors.utsm.edu.my Assalamualaikum and very good morning.